Hello guys and welcome back to another mCrater tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is the loop bag that I made in the live stream. So it will be more condensed than the our video that I basically worked on it. Um, yeah, so if we right click on it, then we get a select amount of items uh, generated through procedures. And then we can basically grab those out of the loot table and we can use them with uh, whatever we want. We can set the... Um, loot to whatever we actually want. Uh, we can design the GUI or whatever. If we open it again, it doesn't generate again. Obviously, we don't want to make it generate over again, but you can reuse the bag um, for other things afterwards. So, as you can see, it just stores the items in there. Uh, I have another loot bag that isn't open over here, and I'm going to just demonstrate quickly. Um, I'm going to go into my inventory and I don't have the uh, thing set up, so I think it's, uh, well, let's get out of there, and then it's, I think that one, advanced tooltip. So as you can see, the um, bag has two MBT tags, so there is a couple data that we're basically storing on it. So when we right click on it, it basically generates um, a, changes the value of the tag, and then it basically makes it so we can't uh, generate more loot over time using MBT. Uh, that's the gist of it. Uh, it's obviously a lot more advanced later on, but I'll explain that in just a second. Okay, so we have uh, th four things, actually, for a loot bag. We have the item itself, and then we also have the GUI. Those are the two elements that make up the actual loot bag. And then we have two procedures. Uh, one is when loop egg in inventory tick, and then the other one is the uh, when right clicked in error. So there's two different procedures in these ones. Um, one of them generates the tags for when it's actually uh, in the player's inventory. So basically what this does is make sure the tags are assigned um, when the when it gets moved over from the creative inventory or it's generated in a chest and then pulled over into the player's inventory then it immediately assigns the tags for the loot um that only happens once obviously and then uh once it's opened those values change and then that's where this procedure comes in all right so with that being said let's take a look at the item settings so we're on uh 2020 20... 2.1 uh, this pers uh, this system does work on uh, 2021.3 I uh, actually originally designed it on that particular version so it, sh it does work on that version uh, it's just I updated it. it still works so that's that's fine that's actually really good because then it should be stable for most other versions so we have the texture for the loot table here nothing other other settings have been changed um, I believe outside of this page here, we've only put it under miscellaneous and we've made sure that the stack size is one. We want it's a stack size of one because it does have an inventory and we don't want uh, to stack the items on each other. That would be actually really bad because it could mess up the stuff. So that's why there's only a stack size of one. Um, Outside of that, I don't think there's any other settings here that I have basically assigned. It's not a food, so we haven't um, made it a food item. Advanced properties, we have assigned the loot table inventory. Um, that uh, GUI that we basically set, it's uh, linked here. We have to link it in order for it to work properly. And we've assigned the how many slots there are. There was exactly um, nine slots, so there was this value needs to be nine. The maximum stack size should be 64. Um, again, you can adjust this however you want, but if you want to use it for items afterwards uh, for storage, it's probably best to keep it the default value. Uh, it doesn't have custom dispense properties, so we don't need to worry about that. Triggers, this is the only other part that's uh, the most important. So when right clicked on uh, entity position, so basically this is where when you right click on the air, um, like with it, with air. So let's take a quick look at this. So basically what's going on is we're testing if the um, item does not have has been opened tag 
Now basically this is the tag that we're using to determine if it has been opened or not. Uh, we do assign it down here uh, to be true. Um, I believe in the other one, the inventory tick, we're assigning it false if it doesn't have the tag here. So again, we're just testing if not, and then the item tag, if so if it doesn't exist, and then we're testing if it, or basically applying the false value to that tag. Um, if it doesn't exist, we're basically creating it so it does exist. So that's basically all that's going on in that one. And then we can go back to this one. We're obviously setting it to true so we can um, reuse the bag for other uses uh, afterwards and not worry about it generating loot. So basically what's happening in here is we have two variables. We have uh, these couple local variables. There is a random num, which is stands for random number, and then we have counter. So the counter basically acts as a uh, thing for uh, going through the the slots so basically every time that this repeater runs now it runs the exact same amount of times as how many slots we have so it will start at zero that's where the counter is set up here that's really important to start at zero and then what it's going to do is it's going to start from zero and then every time it gets through this it's going to uh, increase the counter value by one. So basically every one is going to increase the slot number which is then defined in the set uh, in slot for the inventory of the item. So every time that the item is when it has a chance to generate an item it's going to update the slot number through the counter number. So in short uh, we're basically testing using the counter to basically uh, adjust the slot that we're basically going to generate it from and then we're going to basically uh, use that same number to tell it to put it in that slot so hopefully that makes sense basically nine slots counter uh, every time this counter increases is changes the slot number where it's going to be basically um, generating the loot so that's in short what it is uh, the random number is basically going to tell it to first um, have a 50% chance of generating a loot item in that particular slot number. Now again, remember we're starting with slot zero, so all this is relevant or irrelevant for when it's actually going to generate. Uh, the only time that it does matter is when it gets down to here when it changes the slot number. So it's going to try to see if it's like below zero then it's not going to or pardon me below 0 0.5 then it's not going to matter too much for it to actually generate the loot it's just going to ignore it if it's equal to or greater than 0 0.5 though it's going to then roll another random number for the same tag and then it's going to test between those values so basically what i've done here is i've adjusted the weight for the actual loot so netherite ignits are um, a lot rarer than say diamonds or shulker boxes or the um, uh, budding crystal blocks so uh, obviously i put that at the top but i've basically tested for a range for that new number that we just assigned so we can override the number even though that it's inside the main um, thing that we're basically testing for because after this is run we don't need to worry about it we can always set the variable again so we use the same variable and that's basically what we did so this new variable um, new value should I say is not going to be zero, above equal to or above 0 0.5 it can range from 0 to 1 again so um, basically we're just testing if it's equal to and then less than and then we're doing basically uh, greater than and then less than equal to or less than and then we're doing that all the way to the last value until we reach one um, again if you adjust these numbers uh, will depend in depending on the weight of what the item is so if you wanted it something really rare you could adjust the maximum weight for this to be like something 0 0.1 or something like that or 0 0.01 or something uh, you do that to add like more values you just basically increase this and then you adjust all the numbers 
to kind of fit what you need. Uh, sadly, there isn't a easier way about going about making a random uh, thing. You would have to adjust like uh, shift the numbers around in order to add support for the next one. So it will require a little bit of math uh, in order to figure out what weights and stuff you want to actually implement, but uh, there that's just the way it is. So um, outside of that, that's pretty much it. I'll just cover quickly where the blocks are found. So uh, the local ver or we'll start with the if statement. The if statement is found under flow control. It's always been under here for the most part. You can basically just grab this one and that will do just fine. And then for the not, uh, you want to go under logic. And then there is one right here. It's called not. And then the MBT. Now this is under the item procedures. Uh, there is an MBT one a little bit further down. You want this one right here. And then you want to give it a basic name for what it's actually going to be doing. Uh, this name can be overwritten by other things as well as mods, so make sure that it's pretty unique for what you're doing. Um, if you're going to assign something else for something like if a mod wants to tap into your mod, then uh, they will have to use this particular string for changing the, the item MBT. So um, this should be fine the way it is. Uh, most people aren't going to be testing for specific items in general, and it's a lot harder to if you're using another mod. You have to actually use tags and stuff like that, but just keep that in mind. So when you do give it a name, uh, make sure that it, it basically reflects on what it is so it doesn't have conflict with the rest of your script. In other words, don't just call it tag or anything like that and then name something else tag and then you have two tags and then it could overlap and mess things up. So it's important to make them unique. Uh, then counter, this is a variable, so we go under local variables, and then we grab this one right here. Uh, this can be global and local, so you want to find the one that you have. Uh, if you have multiple global variables, then make sure that the thing says uh, local, and make sure to set up your local variable here and here. Uh, both of these are numbers, so um, you need a number tag right there. Again, for the math, uh, you need for a zero, which is found under math again. The repeater is found under flow control again. You can actually grab the repeater right here, and then you just basically assign the amount of slots of your GUI. This has to be the total number of slots that you have, so that's important. And then again, we're doing the same thing with a random number for that. We're just grabbing a random number and then we're giving it a math operator of random right here and that's basically just generating a random number between zero and one and again if statement uh, then we have a operator here which is found under logic it's the dark blue one uh, you can set the value like a lot of these other blocks like the and and stuff uh, you can click on the equal sign and then you can basically uh, set the um, the operation for it. So in this case, what we're testing for is equal to or greater than, and then we're testing for our local variable for the random number. So for that one, you would need to go under here and grab the one like that, and then you're basically testing for your number, which is basically found under math again. So you can find that there. And then we're basically generating another one of these. And then we go into an and statement. So that one's a little bit different. Um, again, we go under logic, and then it's the lighter blue one. Not this one that has a little bit of green in it. It's uh, the one up here. And then you click on the equal sign, and then it should be and. You also have or and x or as well to choose from, as well as not equal to. But we want and for this one uh, because we want to test for a range, right? So we're using an and statement. And then what we're doing is we're just using the operations. Now, it's important to have it set up like this, um, equal to and greater than, and equal to and less than for the first value. And then every one after that should have a greater than, not equal to and greater than symbol. So the reason for that is you don't want the values to overlap. So we're using basically the same values as... Um, Actually, I just noticed that this is a little bit wrong. That should be uh, 0 0.25. Whoops. All right. So anyhow, um, basically what you would do is this would be 
1.5, I guess, and then the range would be uh, between equal to, and that would fall under this particular item. But if you set greater than, then it'll be 0 0.151 and so on. So it will just keep increasing. Um, if you were to go equal to and greater than 0 0.15, then it would be the exact number of that. And these two would all overlap. So you don't want that to actually happen. So that's important to have it set up. Uh, the only other block that we need to cover is this one right here that can be found under item procedures. And if you scroll down a bit, uh, it should be right here. And then what we're doing is we're replacing the slot number with our counter number like so. And then you can set the amount that you want to. Uh, you can make this number random even if you wanted to. And um, yeah, you just basically select your item that you want to generate in that particular slot. And uh, yeah, that's basically all there, there is to it. I'm sure there's more efficient ways of setting it up. I'm sure you can randomize uh, different things and then just call it once. That might work as well. But um, this is the way I set it up. So um, and then this basically just sets the value increases the value. So for example, if we go ahead and go into our counter and then what we would want to do is get a math operator. We want to go plus and then what we're doing is we're going to grab another value or another operation here and a number variable and then we're going to increase that by one. So basically what this does is it gets the value of the counter and then increases it by one. So and then that's what this part does. And then right here, what we're doing is we're just assigning a variable to this value. So basically it's the counter number that we already have and then plus one from that. And that's all we're doing right there. And the last, very last block is the item procedure. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit, you can find this one right here. It's a logic variable and we're just using the same variable name as we have up here and then we're setting this to true so it doesn't continue generating the actual again this is the GUI that's very simple uh, there's no extra procedures we just have slots which are the input slots and as you can see they go up to eight but there's actually nine slots if you count them and that's why we're testing for nine so that's the only other important thing that we need to cover but outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.